Half a year ago, I made a video talking about a scummy retro video game reseller that went by the name of Dennis Collects. Now for those that don't know him, this guy was basically paying 30% market value for old video game items and then posting YouTube shorts about it. And at the time, many people didn't realize how badly he was ripping off his viewers because well, Dennis doesn't actually show how much he values the items he's receiving and he also doesn't show the entire trade value, which is super misleading to those who don't know how low he's paying. But I've somehow managed to find someone arguably worse than Dennis, if not at least equally as scummy. And that person is none other than Collector's Luck. This guy has been on YouTube for a few years now and pretty much all his content revolves around game hunting and pickup videos, which is fine, but once you see how much he's paying, you might think otherwise. So I decided to grab 5 random videos from his channel that are more recent to see how much he paid for each video game lot. I thought we would then average out the percentages to get a rough idea of how much he pays percentage wise. Now to Collector's Luck's credit, he doesn't hide anything like Dennis because he does post the price charting total and how much he paid, which makes things a lot easier. But otherwise, it's not looking good for him. Just off the first video, you can see that he bought a handful of N64 and SNES stuff, coming in at approximately $366 US on price charting. But he only paid $100, so that means he paid roughly 27% on this game lot alone. Moving on to the second video, he buys a bunch of GameCube and SNES stuff in which price charting values come out to be $491 US. And well, he only paid $150, meaning he paid just under 31% on this game lot. And looking at the third video, we can see he buys a bunch of Xbox 360, Wii, and PS2 stuff coming in at a total price charting value of $344 US and he claims in the video to have paid $120 for all of it, which means he paid 35% on these items. Now moving quickly to the fourth video, we see him buying a bunch of high value GameCube stuff along with NES and Genesis items, and while this is where it gets interesting because price charting puts the game lot at $922 US, and he paid a grand total of $200 US. Yeah. That means he paid 22% for all of this. And the final video is for a lot of games that contain a Wii and a bunch of 360, PS2, and PS3 titles. The final price charting value for all of this ends up being $309 and he ends up paying $85, so he paid 29% for this game lot here. Now if we take all of those percentages and we add them up and divide them out, we end up with a grand total of 29%, meaning on average this guy is paying under what a local video game store will give you. And people like him are not few and far between anymore. In one of his recent videos, he gets into a scuffle with another reseller as they both try and get to this random dude's bin of games. Take a look. The rain delayed us, so we're still working on putting stuff out. Okay, well, I'm looking for the same stuff he's looking for, so. Okay. The video game stuff? Yeah. Okay. Um, so he's going to buy this whole lot already. Yeah, I've already. Yeah. I've been buying it all. Yeah. Yeah, he's a pretty greedy cat. Pretty much always. <laughs> Sorry, man. First come, first serve. No. You know how it goes. Yeah, that's all. It's honestly kind of bizarre because people like this are killing the secondhand video game market with their greedy practices. And this collector's luck guy openly talks about how he finds various deals in one of his videos where he states here. So how I find this stuff, what I do is I go on marketplace and I type in garage sale and I literally copy paste message every single listing the exact same thing. Hello, do you have any old video games? Game Boy, Nintendo, Sega, PlayStation, Super Nintendo 64. And I just copy paste message that to every single listing. I do that every night. And sometimes, just sometimes, you get lucky and you pull a nice little haul. To me, this embodies why I don't go to garage sales that often anymore. The amount of resellers and people fighting for video games and toys nowadays is really just sad. And the hobby's getting super expensive because of people like this. And truth be told, this is all happening because retro collecting has become mainstream and a lot of people see the potential to make money out of it, which sucks especially for the individuals who want to collect older video games and enjoy them. Retro video game collecting is about playing the games. It's not about financials and investing, nor is it about grading and keeping keeping your stuff sealed. I just want to get something clear. I don't have a problem with most stores that resell older video games. It's just the people who hoard and take advantage of individuals while manipulating the market that really bother me. Because you can resell video games while being fair and supporting the community around you. YouTubers like Mort's Garage and Retro Wolf are perfect examples of this. They always remain transparent on what something is worth and they seek to spread the joy of video games rather than just making financial gains. As of 2023, there isn't much point in collecting physical 
anymore as emulation is getting better and better each year. But there's still going to be people who want to play the games on original hardware and that's totally fine, just be ready to pay a premium. And well that's where I'm going to end this video for now. I apologize if this video felt like a rant, well because it sort of was. I just wanted to shine some light on something that I don't think gets talked about much at all on YouTube. So I just want to say thank you for watching and if you've gotten this far I really appreciate you for listening. And with that said, I hope you have an amazing day. Bye.